Hey, this is where you put the usual disclaimer, so no audio, video, clips from the game, movie, or TV show in question are being used in the making of this next Kedic review. Enjoy the show. Happy Halloween! This is the third part of the Halloween special. And now for something truly horrifying. A movie slash book series so horrifying, so scary, so blood girdingly bad, well, at least the first movie in it, that it causes men to shrivel up like maroons, lose their man cards, and go hide somewhere. A movie so horrifyingly simplistic and stupid that it causes teenage women with no attention spans to cause an eternal debate with themselves and women with actual brains to want to cause assassination plots. <laughs> Yes, I know, there are many horror movies that I could do on Halloween, but you see, I have a different definition of horror. You see, for me, traditional horror movies like slashers and such aren't really horrifying to me. They're comedies, they're laugh riots, they're funny. I like blood and gore. I love watching people die in a lot of situations. And yes, this does creep my wives out. But what would Institute's Night for me, Nirvana Sparkle Horror Movie? Well, let this next category review be the example. As I delve into the deepest part of my soul to wrench out a review of Stephanie Meyer's, well, phenomenon. Prepare yourself, Skoda Questria, for a Halloween tradition unlike any other, because there's no more horrifying movie series than the Twilight series of movies. Stay, if you dare. The horror. The unrequited horror. Never before have I seen a worse movie portrayed on film, let alone one adapted from a book. More specifically, Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series. Granted, this is only the first in a collection of five films. From the first to, of course, Breaking Dawns 1 and 2. But you won't see my review of Eclipse until next year. And thank God I've got an entire year to erase this fear from my mind. Bye, Luna. Please. Please help me. Please let me go to sleep fine tonight. I can't get out of my mind, Christian Stewart's horribly dry, pandering, unmotivated, unemotional, emo, angst, and bad acting. And it's not only her, it's Robert Pattinson, too. And no, he doesn't look like a hot dish of a vampire. He looks... He looks like something I would mold out of clay and stick a wig on. Or maybe make some budget biscuits out of. And plus, he's not that convincing as a smooth-talking vampire either. 
I mean, was every word in the script no more than five lines? Because I could have sworn when I turned the subtitles on, that was exactly what I've got. Dry, deliberate, contrived lines done with a slow, agonizing pace like this. I mean... And every other line was a question between Bella and Edward. Questions abound, but no real answers as the dry, foggy cinema cinematography born of a small town out of out of Washington is dense with fog and no color and no light. Although the special effects are the best part of this movie, and it does give the visuals that vampires are somewhat superhuman, but of course we don't see any of the werewolf variety, at least not yet as the end of the first film. But everyone and everything is so dry. So simplistic, so boring, so bookish. Even Bella's incessant narration sounds like she's reading straight from the book itself, not really putting any emotion into her lines. The directing has bad camera angle, angles, sh shoddy work. Shoddy work and too many zoom-ins. As the... As the pop-latent... Pop-latent soundtrack fills the screen. And even... Even a minute... Scene with vampires. All of the Cullen family playing baseball. As supermassive black hole from... Muse plays in the background. It cuts this, cuts the scene down of any phonetical weight or reasoning. If I was a naive, stupid teenager, filled with the magical whimsy of of these clearly by the by the script by the script scenes, I would be amused, but even for the book standards, it does not live up to the source material, not even the, not even the darndest of things. This is the kind of thing that I would watch, watch if I truly felt the need to scare myself out of my own personal manhood. And all the shrilly girl talk that is unacquitled in this movie, the overprotective mom and dad cliches, every romantic cliche without a kiss in the book, and yes, there was even a time in this movie where Crinston, Crinston was almost in her underwear in this movie. And mind you, I'm not even calling her by her character name of Isabella Swan. See, seeing that the name is only mentioned three times, everybody but he tends to call her Bella. Well, the only Bella that I care about emotionally is the Bella Twins, and not the one named Nikki, the other one. And quite frankly, this movie is horrid. This movie is scary. It's terrifying. Why? Because it's worse than Street Fighter The Legend of Chung li Why? Because it's worse than Dragon Ball Evolution. Why? Because it's worse than Space Jam. Any other movie that I have reviewed in the history of Kinetic Reviews, this movie has it beat in spades. The lack of actual 
actual movie acting, the lack of actual care, the lack of actual, actual good interest and good adaptation. I know this is chapter one of a five movie story, but my God, could you not get it off on on a worst possible note, and no, I am not saying this because I am a man of 30 years old, and I am not in tune with the teenage love romance, I am saying it as a critic, this is a horrible, terrible, monotonous movie that should scare the living pants out of moviegoers, because Quite frankly, this movie made millions up of absolutely nothing. And that's the most terrifying, horrifying thing of all, let alone when vampires are in the sun. They glitter. Worse than season three Power Rangers, the glitter. It is so bad. So horrible. But yet, I do this all in fun. Why? Because, quite frankly, this review was meant to be funny. This was meant to be a joke, like this entire movie is. So if you are a true man's man, and you want something truly horrifying this holiday season to watch. Curl up with your more than you interested girlfriend and try out this horror classic for a spin. You might become so emo and depressive that you might move to Washington on your wife or girlfriend's accord. But as for this movie in terms of being a movie, it's a one. Why? Because I can't give zeros. And even if I gave this thing zeros, it would glitter in the sun so brightly you could see it. I don't care what team you're on. Whether you're on Team Edward, Dry Uninteresting Pants, or Team Jake or Jacob Indian Uninteresting Pants. I'm on team, I hate Stephanie Meyer, and I hate her fans. That's what team I'm on. This has been a Catech Review. I'm going to go find peace in my own Nirvana, maybe by watching Luna Clips again. Happy Halloween, and I hope this, watching this review terrified me terrified you as much as it did me making it. <laughs>